रेनु रे On this occasion I will convey the history of Nabopolassar. Nabopolassar was the founder of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which existed between the 7th and 6th centuries BC. But the Neo-Assyrians that were losing power at the time didn't make his rise easy. If the rebel ruler wanted to gain control he'd have to fight for it. Thankfully for him, the gods were apparently on his side. It was during Nabopolassar's lifetime that the Neo-Assyrian Empire was in decline. This was the dominant power in the Middle East at the time, and Nabopolassar seized the opportunity to rebel against his overlords. The rebellion was a success and he became the ruler of Babylonia. Nabopolassar died after a reign of about 20 years, and was succeeded by his son. Prior to his ascension to the throne, Nabopolassar was an obscure and unknown chieftain of the Chaldeans. In 631 BC, the last major Assyrian king, Ashurbanipal, died and was succeeded by one of his sons, Ashuretlalani. The new ruler was weak, however, and civil war soon broke out. Ashuretlalani was deposed by one of his own generals, Sinshamalishar, who in turn was ousted by Sincharishkin, a brother of Ashuretlalani. In the chaos that ensued, the subjects of the Assyrian Empire, including Babylonia, ceased paying tribute to the Assyrians, and began to assert their independence. Nabopolassar's rebellion was not the first of its kind, as several native rulers had previously defied the Assyrians to claim the throne of Babylonia, only to be deposed soon after. For instance, in 693 BC, a Chaldean prince by the name of Mushazib Marduk was chosen to replace Nergalushazib, a Babylonian Elamite puppet. The latter had succeeded an Assyrian prince, Ashurnadin Shemi, who was murdered by the Elamites. In any case, Mushazib Marduk's reign did not last for long, as the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, attacked and sacked Babylon in 689 BC. Things were different, however, during the time of Nabopolassar. In 626-5 BC, he became the ruler of Babylon by popular consent. When Sinsharishkin learned of this, he prepared an army and marched towards Babylon, hoping to regain control of the region. Fortunately for him, another massive rebellion broke out in Assyria, and Sinsharishkin was forced to return to defend his throne. This meant that the rebel had time to gather his forces to take on the Assyrians. The Chaldeans entered into an alliance with the Medes, another former vassal of the Assyrians, the Scythians, and the Sumerians. In 616 BC, Nabopolassar and his allies went on the offensive, attacking the Assyrians. Assur was sacked in 614 BC, and two years later, the Assyrian capital of Nineveh fell as well. Although this was a huge blow to the Assyrians, their empire did not come to an end, as those who remained fled to Haran, where Asuryublit was installed as the new Assyrian ruler. The Assyrians fled once more, this time to Karchemish, which was under the control of the Egyptians. Finally, it is worth mentioning an artifact connected to the Babylonian ruler. A clay cylinder known as the Nabopolassar Cylinder was discovered in Baghdad around 1921. From the inscription on the cylinder, we learn that the ruler portrayed himself as a pious man and it was due to this piety that the gods were on his side. The author of the text, presumably Nabopolassar himself, mentions how he succeeded in defeating the Assyrians with the help of the gods. Moreover, the text also mentions the restoration work he had carried out on some of the structures in Babylon. That's the history that I can convey this time, I hope it's useful, don't forget to share, like and subscribe.